welcome to the Real Estate Marketing Podcast. My name is Jerome Lewis. I'm your host for today. The Real Estate Marketing Podcast is a podcast where we talk marketing, tech, business, and leadership. We talk these things for real estate agents, real estate investors, and real estate entrepreneurs. The Real Estate Marketing Podcast is a podcast that has two purposes. Purpose number one, to educate and inform our audience and listeners. Purpose number two, Carlin, to spotlight you, your business, your service, or your product in a way that provides value to you, including market exposure and content creation. With that, we have a very special guest. Carlin Ankrum is the founder and lead strategist of Oh Snap Social, as well as the creator of the Fan, Fi- Fan Firestarter Framework, a new approach to social media marketing tailored to businesses tempted to fake their death and flee to Tahiti at the mere thought of content creation. She developed her user-friendly strategy after a decade of working with various brick and mortar businesses that were social media allergic, not because they didn't want to make content, but because they were intimidated by it. Carlin's system addresses this fear, helping newbies get on the fast track to unsticking their social media in just one hour per week. Carlin, I'm excited. I'm excited that you're here. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Excited to spill all of the social media tea today. (laughs) Absolutely. So today we're going to talk about social media overwhelm. But before we get into that, uh, Carlin, please tell us how you got into what it is that you do, like social media. Give us your story. Yeah. So the quick version of that is I have a uh, background in journalism. I have a journalism degree. It wasn't until my senior year, which maybe I'm dating myself here. Web 2.0 was coming out. We're now already onto Web 3. And I realized that businesses could leverage the power of social media to take control of the narrative that the media was putting out there. And I felt that was very, very compelling and a really great direction that companies and brands personal and corporate alike can really lean and leverage this new, air quote, new tech um, of social media at the time. And so from there, I grew uh, my skill set, worked for several startups, brick and mortar businesses, uh, membership organizations. And then seven years ago, I went all in on Osnap Social as an agency. It started with just me. And about six months in, I had more business than hours in a day. So I started to kind of adopt an agency model, which I swore I would never do. Uh, but yet here I am <laughs> five years, five years later after that decision and never looking back. It's been great. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. So social media, a lot of us have the uh, an idea of what it is. What I would like to hear from you, since you're the expert, tell us what social media is. Give us some history on that and how it works. Oh my uh, social media, I think a lot of times gets lost in what we think it is versus what it was actually supposed to be for. And it is to create relationships, to build community over time. It's not a place where, and a lot of us get this wrong, myself sometimes included, where it becomes this like PR push kind of place. Mm -hmm. Really, we need to be bringing back that conversation to social media, right? And a lot of the Mm -hmm. algorithms and things like that are starting, thankfully, to get back to those basics. Um, But it's a power of networking with other people in the wide open lane that is the Internet these days, which is pretty cool. And all for free. Can we just like have like have that be something is what before we had to advertise in those really thick books uh, called Yellow Pages. Um, And now we put all of our stuff out there on social media for free, which is really powerful. Thank you for sharing that. Could you give us like give me three things business owners could do to move the needle on their social media and their and their social media efforts? I think the three things that businesses, brands, personal brands and those listening to this podcast should adopt right now if they're not already is mm-hmm. being themselves on social media through video content. Video content mm-hmm. on social is nothing new. It has been there for five, six, seven, going on a decade now in different formats where it's long form content, short form video, whatever video feels most authentic to you, you should be adopting and being yourself on the camera. It's not enough to be doing a home tour. How can you be in the video of the home tour Mm -hmm. and still have it be authentic to you? A great example, um, and I'm biased because this is my, my realtor, but he dubbed himself the running realtor and he specializes in helping, I'm going to call them like 
older Gen Zs, right? Mm -hmm. Who want to see stuff quick. He literally runs through homes as wow. the home tour. And like does it to like fun, like trending music and like twirls and it's ridiculous. It is very authentic to who he is, but also very authentic to how his ideal target market likes to consume content. And because of that, he's been able to grow his following. He's been able to grow the amount, grow the amount of homes he's been able to close and get media mentions like on Yahoo and all of that stuff. So he kind of had that trifecta going where he was being him on video content and knowing exactly who his audience is. The other two things have a lot to do with the kind of format of your content. One being, are you creating content that is grabbing your audience's attention, not just from the visual component, but also from the text, that quick hook in the beginning, asking a question, giving like a remarkable statistic, things like that, that people want to click and read more. And then the last thing is the call to action. Are you asking them to do something after they've consumed the content? Whether it's consume, you know, whether it's drop a thumbs up if you like this piece of content or if you found this helpful or share this with other, you know, home buyers in your network. You know, it's, it's simple as that. And a lot of us are not even asking <laughs> for what we want our audience to do next. So that's the kind of the three things. Thank you for sharing that. That makes a lot of sense. What would you say, like a lot of people, I like to call them vanity metrics, but what should we be measuring, right? A lot of people get caught up in the vanity. What yeah. should we be measuring outside of the vanity stuff or should we be measuring those vanity things? So could you share some perspective on that? Yeah, and I love this mm -hmm. question because it's kind of like a yes and answer. Mm -hmm. it's, it really depends on your goals. If you're looking, okay. looking to grow your audience, which, Quite honestly, we Quite honestly. all are, but I want you to get out of the vanity metric of the number of follows you have, because truth be told, we do not own our followers on Instagram, on Facebook, mm -hmm. on LinkedIn. If tomorrow, like Mark Zuckerberg, you know, CEO of Meta was like, you know what? This has been so much fun. I'm just going to sail off into the sunset on my private yacht and, you know, it's all over. Would you have anything to stand on? Do you have an email list? Do you have those connections? All of that still matter in the whole, you know, game of marketing that we're all playing. Mm -hmm. So if, if that's your goal is to grow your audience, great. But think about it beyond the follower count. What are you mm -hmm. doing to attract people into specific ecosystems like your email list that you own outright? Um, so that's the biggest thing. What is your goal? And then set the metrics accordingly from there. So for me, I want to, of course, grow my audience, but I want to grow my email list. And I want to grow the amount of engagement that I'm getting on my content, the amount of conversation that is happening, because the more conversation is happening, which also means I have to be an equal participant in said conversation, the more my content's going to get out there to my ideal audience and attract more people to my corner of the Internet to then build that trust factor and then ultimately sign up for my newsletter or download one of the eight freebies I have on my website. Uh, so that's really where. I'm looking to build, but that's my own goal. It doesn't need to be yours. Right. And so I think it really thinks you have to really think through the strategy here. And that's what we do all day at OSNF social is build that, that strategy piece and set those goals with intention. In, in your experience, what would be the most, one of the most common goals that people should focus on? It's definitely connecting the digital dots from wherever your like water cooler is of your social media over mm -hmm. to like your website and I know that's kind of be tricky um, for those of us maybe that are at a specific brokerage. And that's why I think it's really important to build a personal brand. So if you pop over to different brokerages, you always still have that personal brand. So there, I'm sure there's rules of the, you know, rules of the road you got to follow. But I always say build your personal brand website that you're collecting leads through as well. Um, that have your own insights and your own marketing tactics and your own um, thought leadership right? Which I know you're, you're great at as well. Your own thought, thought leadership for um, what is that you're an expert in, because that is what you own. So it's taking that initial water cooler of social and connecting the dots over to a platform that you own, which is usually your website of some sort. So that's the biggest Thank thing. Thank you for sharing that. So, so you mentioned like branding and a big part of branding is like 
personality, including like who you are as a person. So can you help us understand as business owners, how we can inject or input our personality into our content where it's not, where it's not like boring, right? So in, in, as agents, I see this a lot with agents. I was, they'll share like what you said, a home tour, and it's like nothing there. It's like very boring. Anybody can do that. So help yeah. us understand how we can make our content have more personality and more flavor according to who we are and what we do. I think it's trying to find one, who your audience is and what they like within your specific neighborhoods and demographic, and then double down if that's relatable to you. And that's the biggest thing is like, we can't pretend that we're someone that we're not because people, consumers mm -hmm. these days are super smart and they can see right yeah. through all that bogus stuff. So really lean, like if you love, I'm just going to pull this example. Like if you love, uh, oat milk lattes for example like literally just pulled it out of the air and you know that there's like five amazing coffee shops in your neighborhood like local mom and pop ones that make like a killer one you probably want to go to those and have all of your conversations about real estate to the camera like the video content we talked about with a side of oat milk latte because people in your area might just be as in love with that type of co coffee, might check out that spot. You're building trust, you're building relatability, you're building approachability, but you're also at the same time being as authentic to you as possible. Now for me, my example, I teach dance part-time. So yeah, I'm one of the crazy people online that, that are dancing. Do you have to dance in order to be successful in social media? No, 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 no. I don't think that you need to. But it feels authentic to me and my brand because that's kind of the sass that I bring and the energy that I bring. And that, that's part of what I do like to do on the side. And so what are those other hobbies? What are those things that make you you? Just like I mentioned my real estate agent, he runs, but you also see him running through homes. But you see him every morning, you know, with his girlfriend, they're doing like a running fit check where they have like their you know running outfit and their water bottle on the side. And, you know, when they take you on the run with them around the neighborhood, um, you'll also see him working out in his home gym. So he, is, it's very much this, um, jigsaw of who you are on your off time and who you are within your professional life. And you, as the person listening to this, get to determine where that line is. And for everybody, it's not always the same place. Thank you. Er a little bit earlier, you mentioned like, uh, relationships. So can you help us understand how social media plays into relationships? Yeah, relationships are really, really important on social media because it gives you the ability, especially through direct messages uh, and inbox messages on LinkedIn, the opportunity to be real and have a human to human conversations, much like you would with your friends via text message. And I think that's a missed opportunity for a lot of us. We think, okay, we posted and then we just like, whoop, we go to the platform. I encourage you after you posted, spend some time on the platform of your choice, engaging with people who you think are the right audience for you. Example, I'm going to keep using the coffee shop because that's what everyone I feel like can relate to. If you know that there's like that hot spot that your audience, your home buyers, your home sellers go to just in the morning to grab their cup of coffee before they head into work. That's a great place on digital, on social to comment, be in the comments, commenting on that amazing latte art, commenting on like, oh, I love the vibe this afternoon when they, you know, have an art painting class in the back of the coffee shop, whatever it is, leave comments in that coffee shop's space online because your audience is following and can see all the comments and they will find you that way too. And I think that's often an underutilized <laughs> tactic is that engagement piece, but it also allows you to continue relationships that you've maybe started offline and be visible online. I've seen that happen several times where I've worked for a startup and I've lost touch with people over time, then suddenly I get on their radar again. And I think that's also something that it's a long-term game. So this whole concept of social media, and it's about being present, being visible so that people know that you exist and are keeping up with what you're doing so that you stay top of mind at all times when someone has a need, like buying a home, selling a home, 
you know, investing in a property uh, that you are the first person that comes to mind because you're consistently out there day in and day out showcasing your expertise. How do we how do we take content from like what you're saying? You're hitting your your head towards the next question is like, how do we make how do I make my content where it's not too professional, not too boring, but also not too personal? Like, how do I make my content? How do I balance it out? I think that's a really, it's a great question. And it's a tough one to answer because everyone's, as I mentioned, like their line is different. So for me, I know a lot of people, I, I had a, a daughter back in 2020 or 2022 rather. And, you know, I was posting her a lot because that's the season of my life that I was in. And I, mm-hmm. you know, other people in my network are also moms and that kind of thing. But then I was like, okay, how much of this do I really want to be online? And that was a personal preference for me. So I don't share her as much. I share more of like what I'm doing in my business, which I think is great too. But I always throw like a dash of like personal life in there. So three things, you know, that can help blur the line and make it feel like you're subtly selling, if that makes sense, is on Instagram stories. If you are on Instagram, Instagram stories, the first thing I do every single day is do like a daily list of the things that I'm doing. So it could be, you know, today I, I went and got my wrist checked because I just got wrist surgery. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to record a podcast, right? And then I'm going to create an audit for a client. Then I'm going to go to hip hop dance class, right? And so it's a mixture of things of like, what am I working on? What am I doing? And if there's any relevant people, if I'm going to work at a coffee shop, I would probably tag the coffee shop. You want to know why? Because the coffee shop will get notified and they might share that on their, on their stories too. And then that exposes me to more people. So always be thinking about how you can connect all the digital dots, but at the same time, know where your line is and understand that you can always be subtly selling, being approachable. You, it it takes some time (laughs) to find where that happy medium is, but you'll know when you hit it because the responses that you'll get from your direct messages will start coming in too, which is really great to hear. Thank you. So earlier you mentioned like, uh, I'm not sure if you said the full word or what, but we as marketers, we understand what is a CTA, right? So I want you to help us understand what's a CTA, um, you know, beyond the abbreviation. And then I want you to, in my experience, or when I was researching, you have two, there's two CTAs that you reference. So I want you to help us understand that. Yeah. So calls to action or CTAs, like we're not spelling cat incorrectly. I had that someone on my Instagram, I wrote like, here's three CTAs you need to do. And they're like, do you know that you spelled cat wrong? And I was like, mm, it's, a, it's a call to action. Um, so again, that goes back to what do you want someone to do once they reach your content? And there's two types of calls to action. One is internal call to action and one is external. So let's take the internal one, for example, first. Internal is really where you are creating content and you are utilizing your call to action at the bottom of your caption or within your post, your carousel post on Instagram, or maybe it's, you know, follow for more or some type of call to action on screen, but you're wanting them to engage on the platform that your content is on. So some examples are, you know, save this for later, double tap if you found this helpful, Uh, drop a, as I mentioned before, like thumbs up emoji. If you agree, share it with other home buyers and sellers in your community. Drop me a DM. I'm happy to answer any questions you have about this topic. And you can also create additional social and conversation around asking a question. But the caveat for this call, this internal call to action is you have to make it as simple as possible. People on social are there for one thing. Well, they're there for a few things really to be entertained and to escape their like normal rigmarole of life (laughs) to be totally transparent, but make it a simple question. Are you ready to learn more comment? I'm ready to get the goods immediately. And you see a lot of people doing this recently and a lot of them are leveraging, you know, a lot of them are more power users. I'll call them and they're leveraging, you know, many chat and bots and things like that to immediately DM that resource, et cetera, which is great. If you don't have a ton of engagement right now from a conversation comment perspective, 
you can go ahead and you know hang around 10 minutes after you posted and just drop that link to people directly as they ask for it. Uh, and I think the ever popular uh, internal example, both on screen if you're doing a video and within uh, a caption is follow me for more real estate tips. Follow me more for uh, more social media tips. Those are all really great examples for internal, meaning you're keeping the person on the platform. Now, external, once again, is used within a platform to direct people off the platform. That's that whole digital dot connection point we were talking about. And a lot of us don't do this enough. <laughs> we don't do this enough. Uh, and so I really want you to think about what do you have that's a freebie? What do you have that maybe you have a webinar coming up or a first time home buyer seminar? What can you do to drive traffic away? So it could be like download your copy of XYZ freebie. You know, you're invited to my next webinar. DM me for details. Um, if you're doing some type of fundraiser um, in the community, lend your support here. Right. So you're trying to take people from where you are online, that water cooler social off somewhere else. And a great place to do this is within your Instagram stories in particular. If you think about it, Instagram doesn't have a lot of uh, link opportunities besides those that are baked into the bio and a lot of underutilized, uh, an underutilized feature rather is in your Instagram stories. We all have the link sticker now. No more do you need to have 10,000 followers to have the whole like swipe up because we all got the link sticker. So utilize that link sticker to drive traffic somewhere else. Thank you. I have, um, in my experience, I, so just recently I was working with a client and it was a broker and he came on and he shared their social media and it was very corporate-y, mm. like very uptight. So, but we got, so when we hired, when we, we had brokers and they are kind of like the corporate entity. And then you got these agents underneath and the agents kind of need to handle, they, they're kind of individuals and personalities. Mm -hmm. So can you help us understand how we as agents and individuals can not seem so corporate -y. like what do you recommend that we do so we don't seem so it's professional but it's kind of boring like give us yeah. some input on that yeah, yeah i think you know and again every broker is different and every real estate agent is different um that's mm -hmm. what makes the world go round and i agree yeah. i think a lot of uh brokers just have a little bit of a a stale look at social media again because they're mm -hmm. lo looking at it from a PR perspective from like a push perspective when really they need to be thinking about it as a conversation point. Um, because if you think about, you know, real estate, you know, home buyers and sellers are trusting these agents. Like those of you listening with their like livelihood, basically like the biggest financial investment they've, they've probably ever made in their life. And there needs to be a certain level of no like trust there that is it, needs to be reflected across the board because these days we have a lot of options as you know home buyers and sellers <clears throat> and so we just need to make sure that <laughs> we're building our personal brand as much as possible that can stand on its own away and this might get some flack but away from <laughs> the brokerage if we can that doesn't mean that we can't take our time and share some of the content that the brokerage is doing but i also think the brokerage side they should be highlighting their agents in a really fun approachable uh likable way rather than like this is jane she's been in the real estate market for five years her average you know, sales for the year is blah, blah, blah. Like no one cares. People want to know why Jane is awesome, what Jane does around the neighborhood, why she decided to go into real estate in the first place because everyone's got their own eye and why and what is her secret sauce to being successful? Like people want to know that stuff because that's they're building rapport at that point. So think about it in a way that is more people first uh, than faceless logo first <laughs> share share with us one of your favorite success stories um one of my favorite success stories is she is a real uh, not a real estate agent she is a uh professor 
in at the University of Washington. I help a lot of speakers, authors, PhD, MD folks as well in my business. And she was looking to increase her her followers because she wanted to land a book deal. She went to a literary agents before she met me and they were turning her down because she didn't have enough audience. So she's like, I know that it's vanity metric, but like I need it to for them to even pay attention to me. It doesn't even mm -hmm. matter that I teach 2000 students a semester. They don't care about that. They want to see that I'm making an impact and an impression online that I have an audience there. I said, great. <laughs> Challenge accepted. Um, and within about uh, eight months of us working together, she grew her following um, from like a 1500 to over 25,000 people on Instagram. And then she took her content that she had there from short form video format and repurposed it directly over on TikTok. And I think today she's got like 89,000 people on TikTok. Um, and she's a psychology professor at the University of Washington. And she now she has a book deal and she's got a literary agent. So she's stoked. Um, I will say that I felt a little bit like a therapist working with her, which is kind of funny because she's in the psych psychology realm. And because she was like, I don't know what I don't know about social media. And I need to be able to figure this out to share my expertise in a way that my audience who are college students, right? Um, feel like they can relate to me. And so she has sparked some humor in there and, you know, a couple of viral reels later and, you know, she's like, oh, this is working. Now, what did you say about how to connect the dots? What do I need to set up from a forum perspective to collect all these leads? I'm like, you should have done that before. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's a great success story. She's crushing it even still to this day. And I think, I think she's having some fun with it too, which I always love to see you know, getting them started, getting up the strategy, having them be clear of their tactic and letting them kind of go off into the wild and, and scale it on, uh, their own, on their own. I agree because you're, you're right. It should, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't feel like so much work. There is work, but it shouldn't feel that way. Yeah. And in my experience, when I'm showing people, I'm like, look, what you said earlier is like what I say a lot. It's like, look, we got to get on video so we can inject and show people who we are. So it's leading me to ask you this question on like, how do we help people um, like understand the importance of video and like, how do we help them get over that hump? Because so many of people are afraid to like get out there and do video content, but it's so essential to our marketing strategy and our branding. Yeah. I always say like practice, practice, practice. Like, you know, you, it's just like going into a gym, you know, you're not going to have like six packs abs in two, in two minutes or less. You have to go and practice, practice, practice. And the easiest way I tell anyone to get started, if they're like, I, you know, like the imposter syndrome's happening. I don't know how to get out of this funk. I always say, go to your Instagram and start with Instagram stories. The best thing is about Instagram stories is they're there for 24 hours and then they're gone. That is the best thing. And, and at that point too, you get to test and see what's resonating with your existing audience, as well as expose yourself to new ones if you tag it properly and all that good stuff. But that is the simplest way to feel comfortable about it. And I will say, do not compare yourselves to someone's chapter 20 when you're on chapter two of your business. It's not fair to you and it's not fair to the people who are looking for solutions that, that you have. Don't do that. Listen to that for me. I did that. And that like basically paralyzed me in business. And it wasn't until I refocused my why and put like literally blinders on where I went to the, any type of platform with an intent to create content first, then consume second. So take it for what it's worth. <laughs> Keep those buttons right, on you. and keep going and sharing what it makes you. Thank you for sharing that. Carlin, could you tell us, this has been excellent. I appreciate your time. You yeah. shared a lot of value with us. Uh, you. Could you tell us how we can learn more about you online? Yeah. The best place to find all me all over the web is osnapsocial.com. And I will say osnapsocial.com forward slash resources has a lot of fun freebies mm -hmm. for you um, to check out. So definitely give that a whirl. All right. Thank you so much, Carla. I appreciate you. I'm going to close this down. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye-bye.